Hey guys, it's Lucky Ghost here, and today we're going to talk about the Solo Stamina Necromancer. The Solo Stamina Necromancer is in a great position as always, and this build in particular is incredibly fun. I have made some changes to take advantage of some of the new gear and some of the new champion points that were added in this patch, both of which serve to make this build even stronger than it was before. Okay, so let's get into it. First, let's talk about the race. As for the race, you can go with either Dark Elf, Khajiit, or Orc, all of which are going to perform similarly and be great for a stamina DPS class. As for the Mundus, you can use Lover while soloing or Shadow while in a group. And as for the attributes, we're going to put all 64 points into stamina because of the new levels of health that everyone has. We really don't need to put points into health anymore. All right, now let's get into the meat of the build. We are going to be going over the skills, the gear, the passives, and the rotation. And then finally, we'll dig into the new champion point setup for this build. All right, the front bar for the solo stamina necromancer is going to look like this. The first ability on the front bar is going to be Blighted Blast Bones. This is our hardest hitting ability. We will use this ability anytime it's not on cooldown, which is going to work out to about every third cast of an ability. This ability basically acts as a delayed time bomb. You're going to press the button and then two and a half seconds later, it's going to explode doing massive AOE damage in a massive area. The second ability is going to be the ability we use the most. This is Brawler. And a lot of the decisions I made for this build were made specifically to make this ability hit even harder. Brawler is going to be our spammable. We're going to be using this anytime there's a lot of enemies around us the more enemies that are near us the more damage we do to each enemy there's a multiplier that goes on where the more enemies within our swing the more damage we do to each enemy because of our master's weapon and we'll touch on that at the end brawler is one of the most fun abilities in the game because not only does it do great damage but it's also going to wrap you in a shield that makes it nearly impossible to kill you and each enemy you hit increases the shield strength by 50 percent up to a total of 300 percent so the more enemies you're attacking the harder it is to kill you and the more damage you do and if that sounds fun that's because it definitely is the third ability on the front bar is going to be unnerving boneyard we're using this ability for two reasons one is that it's going to provide a nice little aoe dot the second of which is that it's going to provide an aoe major breach which means it's going to reduce the resistances of any enemy that steps in it by 6,000. this is giving us a lot of the penetration that we need for solo content the fourth ability on the front bar is going to be camouflage hunter this is pure a bar buffer which means we're never actually going to press this ability we're putting it on the bar because it's going to buff our damage just by slotting it just because this ability is slotted we're going to get the three percent increased weapon damage from the fighter skilled passive we're also going to get major savagery which is going to increase our weapon critical rating by 2629 and we're going to get minor berserk anytime we deal damage to an enemy's flank now while you're soloing you won't very often get the chance to attack things from behind it will happen occasionally as you're circling around them while they're casting an ability but that last stat on this bar buffer is definitely going to come in a lot more handy in group content where the tank has the enemy faced away from you the fifth ability on the front bar is detonating siphon this ability does a tremendous amount of damage to the enemies over 12 seconds and then explodes at the end doing a ton more not only that but it's also a bar buffer in fact every ability from the gravelord skill line is going to increase our critical chance by 10 percent when the enemy is below 25 percent health which is why necromancers tend to really pop off in execute on top of that, this ability specifically has a buff that says, while slotted, your damage done is increased by 3%. So it's a great dot, it's a great bar buffer, which means we're going to keep this skill on the front bar to buff our brawler swings and our blighted blast bones. As for the front bar ultimate, we're going to use Pestilent Colossus. This is our heavy hitter ultimate. It's going to attack the enemy three times, doing a ton of damage each time. And then finally, it's going to apply major vulnerability to the enemy for 12 seconds, increasing all of our damage done to them by 10% for the duration. This ultimate is the primary reason why why every trial group likes to have three or four necromancers in the group major vulnerability is an incredibly powerful debuff all right next let's talk about the back bar the first ability on the back bar is going to be skeletal archer skeletal archer is basically a single target dot that you cast we're going to summon an archer from the ground that's going to attack the enemy every two seconds each time the archer deals damage its next attack will do five percent more than the previous attack which is exactly why we're never going to cast this early. We're always going to let it do as many attacks as it can and then fully expire so that it can get in those last few hits, which hit the hardest. So always wait until this ability expires before using it again. Another important thing to know about the Skeletal Archer is there's a passive in the Necromancer skill line that increases our penetration anytime we have a pet up. There's also another passive in the Necromancer skill line that increases our regen anytime we have a pet up. So we always want to make sure we have this Archer up. It's going to give us better stamina regen. It's also going to give us more penetration 
penetration so that we can always be doing more damage with all of our other abilities. The second ability on the back bar is going to be Arrow Barrage. Arrow Barrage is a nice AoE dot that we can throw on the floor. If you don't want to have to come back here to reapply Arrow Barrage as often, you can take the Endless Hail Morph, which is going to last a little bit longer, but also do a little bit less damage in a smaller area. The third ability on the back bar is going to be Resolving Vigor. This ability is going to heal us for 16,000 health over four seconds. That is huge. That's over 4,000 health per second on buffed, which means when we're actually in combat and fighting, that's actually going to be healing us for quite a bit more than that. Remember, all of these numbers that you're looking at are unbuffed. In combat, they're all going to hit quite a bit harder. Anytime you get into trouble, switch to the back bar, pop your Resolving Vigor, do a dodge roll, and you'll be at full health by the time you're done rolling. The fourth ability on the back bar is Spirit Guardian. Spirit Guardian is a fantastic utility ability because it does a couple of things for us. It lasts 16 seconds, and it's going to be healing us for roughly 2,500 health every two seconds. It's a nice heal over time ability that's going to keep our health topped off if something should happen to do a little damage through our Brawler Shield. Not only that, but it's also going to reduce the amount of damage we take by 10%. A 10% damage reduction is pretty huge, and we're definitely going to be taking advantage of it. The fifth ability on the back bar is another fantastic utility ability, Beckoning Armor. This is going to do a few things for us. It's going to be providing major resolve, which is going to increase our resistances by 6,000 for 20 seconds. Anytime this is up, we're going to take significantly less damage. Not only that, but while it's active, anytime a ranged enemy shoots at us, the Beckoning Armor is going to chain them into us, which works perfectly with our Brawler Swing. So basically what we'll do is we'll run up to the thickest mob in the pack and we'll start wailing on him and then any of the ranged mobs that are around will get chained in automatically by our beckoning armor while we're swinging and they'll slide right into our brawler swings and just get melted and remember by pulling them in that means now there's more enemies that our brawler swing is hitting which means our brawler swing is doing more damage to each of them because our damage is amplified by the number of enemies near us not only that, but we get more shields for every swing as well. So this beckoning armor just works perfectly with this build. Finally, for our back bar ultimate, you can do a couple of things with the back bar ultimate. You can either slot Pestilent Colossus just as a bar buffer because of the passive we mentioned earlier, where every ability from the Gravelord line is going to increase our chance to create and execute. So you could just put Pestilent Colossus back here and it'll be a little bit of a bar buffer, particularly in execute. Or what you could do is put Ravenous Goliath back here and then anytime you're doing something that looks extremely dangerous, you can pop this basically becoming unkillable for 20 seconds. So if there's a particularly difficult part of a fight where you tend to struggle and you need a little more damage, you need a little more health just to make sure you survive for 20 seconds, this is the skill for you. It's going to give you 30,000 extra health. It's going to give you a ton of life regen. It's going to basically make you impossible to kill for those 20 seconds. This is a really fun skill to use. And that's one of the themes for the Necromancer. They have so many really cool, really fun abilities in their arsenal, making them one of my favorite classes in the game. All right, for the gear, we are changing it up a bit from the last patch. If you're still using the old gear, that's fine. That's still going to be incredibly effective. Just swap over to the new skill setup and the new passive setup. The old gear will still continue to work just fine. I went ahead and tried something new this patch. I'm taking advantage of the new Dagon's Dominion set. This set is a ton of fun. It's going to buff the weapon damage significantly for all of our AOE abilities and because our spammable is an aoe along with most of our other abilities well it's basically buffing everything that we're doing a lot making it a really fun set to use on this build and any brawler build for that fact i'm pairing this with zogvin which is going to give us a ton of critical to amplify the massive amount of weapon damage that we're getting from Dagon. And it's also going to provide minor force so that we don't have to run Barb Trap and we can run some more of those fun utility abilities that the Necromancer has access to. I've also chosen to run the Master's Greatsword, which is buffing our Brawler Swings significantly. I'm only able to do this because of one of the new CP perks we'll talk about in a second that makes it so that I don't need to run the Ring of the Pale Order anymore because we're doing so much direct damage, we can take advantage of a CP perk that leeches life back to us every time we swing our brawler. As for the back bar, I'm going to use the Maelstrom Perfected Bow because it pairs perfectly with Arrow Barrage and it gives us access to one more nice AoE dot. This build is all about dropping tons of AoE damage and just melting any of the enemies that come near us. We're basically an unkillable walking ball of area of effect damage. And so just to be clear, in order to run Dagon's Dominion and Zogvin and a Master's Greatsword, that means you're not going to be running a monster set. 
you're going to be running your Zogvin helmet and shoulder along with the Zogvin jewelry. I intentionally ran this build through Vodashan Hollows with an assortment of blue and purple gear just so that you guys would know that you don't have to have your gear golded out to be effective in this game. I absolutely destroyed veteran Vodashan Hollows, no problem with blue jewelry and purple gear. Now I do have gold weapons and I highly recommend you gold your weapon out first when you get the chance. That's going to do the most to increase your damage. But if I didn't have gold weapons, if it had just been purple, it would have been fine. As for the starter gear setup, you can just run Briar and Hundings. Any combination of the two is going to be perfect for getting this build going until you have a chance to get into the dungeons and farm this Dagon and Zogvin. This build will still be incredibly strong even without the dungeon gear. And as always, there will be a written guide linked in the description below where I have all of the different gear setups that you can choose from so that you can pick the one that's right for you in case you happen to be one of those players that really doesn't want to do any group content. So you want the best gear that you can get by purely soloing or whether you are the type of player that doesn't mind going into a few dungeons to get the strongest build possible. Either way, I've got you covered. So be sure to check out the written guide below for all of the setups. All right, next up, let's talk about the passives. We're going to be taking all of our class passives because we are using abilities from all three lines, and there's a lot of incredibly valuable passives that go a long way to increase both our damage and survivability on this character. We're going to be using a two-handed weapon on the front bar, so we will be taking all of the two-handed passives. We're going to be using a bow on the back bar, so we'll take all of the bow passives. We're going to be wearing seven pieces of medium armor, so we will take all of the medium armor passives. We won't need to wear any heavy armor on this build because we're going to be brawling, which is going to be more than enough to protect us from damage. We're going to be taking the first four passives in the Fighter's Guild. We'll take both of the passives in the Undaunted Guild. We will take the first passive in the Assault line, which is going to give us 30% increased move speed on our mount at all times. Make sure you only put one point into this passive. Putting two points in does nothing for your mount movement speed. Next up, we'll take all of our Racial passives. And then finally, we're going to take Medicinal Use Level 3 in the Alchemy line. Okay, next up, let's talk about food. And please do remember that food in this game is not optional. Food is incredibly important. Don't put off getting food. The 100 gold it costs to keep yourself fed in this game for a couple of hours is nothing. That's going to take, what, three pieces of white gear that you found on the floor, on a dead mob, or in a chest, right? Which you can find in minutes. And then your character is going to be infinitely stronger for the entire two-hour period. It's going to make it so you don't run out of stamina. If you're running out of stamina, the reason you're running out of stamina is because you're not using food and you're not using potions. So please make sure you use food. And one of the great things about the food I'm about to recommend is it scales with you. So you can buy it at level one if you want, or as soon as you have the money to buy yourself some. And it will scale with you. You don't have to wait until CP 160 to start using this food. And this food is called Lava Foot Soup. It's going to increase your max stamina by 5,000 and your recovery by 500. That is a ton of stamina and a ton of recovery. It's going to make it a lot harder to run out of stamina. As long as you have the stamina to keep swinging your sword, you're not going to die, right? Because you're going to continuously reapply that brawler shield every time you swing. The only way you can die is if you run out of stamina. So eat the food, don't run out of stamina, and stay alive. Now, there is one other option for food. You could also take Orzoga's Tribe Trifle Pocket. This is going to give you, instead of max stamina, it's going to give you 5,000 health. So if you feel like at low levels, especially in low CP, before you get a chance to get some of these CP points that are going to give you a little more health, you can use Orzoga's Tribe Trifle Pocket. It's going to give you 5,000 extra health. It's going to make you quite a bit chunkier, but it's also still going to continue to give you the 500 stamina recovery. It's going to be great for your sustain. You're going to do a little less damage with this because part of the damage equation is how much stamina you have. Every 1000 stamina equates to roughly 100 weapon damage. So by using this food, you essentially have about 100 less weapon damage. So a little bit less damage, nothing major, and it'll help keep you alive if you need that. But I highly recommend first trying out the lava foot. See how it feels. If you feel like you're not dying, you feel fine, then stick with this. You're going to do more damage this way. Okay, next up, let's talk about the other half of the sustain sustain equation. That's your potions. The potion I highly recommend using whenever you're doing something difficult is going to be called Essence of Weapon Power. This is going to grant you Major Brutality, which is going to increase your weapon damage by 20%. It's going to grant you Major Savagery, which is going to increase your critical rating. Now we do have Camo Hunter on the front bar, which is also giving us this buff. So on our front bar, it's redundant. But every time we switch to the back bar, we lose that buff. This potion makes sure we have it on both bars. But the nice thing about having Camo Hunter on is that whenever we're doing easy content or content where we don't need to be spending money on these expensive potions, we can use the Essence of Stamina potions. And because of Camo Hunter, we still get access to one of the buffs from the expensive potion, even though we're using these basic cheap green stamina potions that drop off of mobs that we kill. 
So feel free to use the essence of stamina anytime you're doing something that's not really difficult. And then as soon as you feel yourself struggling a bit, switch on over to these expensive potions so that you can put out a ton more damage. And if you didn't know when you're supposed to use potions in this game, it's literally anytime your potion is not on cooldown and you're in combat, you should push the button, right? Anytime you can use a potion, you should use a potion while you're in combat. It's going to give you stamina back. It's going to give you major endurance, which gives you stamina recovery. And if you're using these expensive potions, it's also also going to give you 20% more weapon damage and weapon critical. Potions in this game are not meant to be taken lightly. They are incredibly powerful tools once you get used to using them. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're running out of stamina a lot, it's probably because you're forgetting to use your potion or you're not using food. However, there is a little bit more to it. There are some champion points we'll talk about coming up here that are going to help you sustain a little bit in fights as well. And so if you're using the food and you're using the potions and you're still running out, you might just be a little bit low CP. Getting a few levels down the line will help with that a lot. All right, as for our Mundus, I'm going to recommend using Lover when you're by yourself or you can use Shadow if you would like. And anytime you're in a group, definitely use Shadow not lover all right next up let's talk about our rotation briefly we're going to start by pre-applying our buffs which is going to be four and five on the back bar our mender and our bone armor then we're going to summon our archer drop our hail and throw out our blast bones and then we'll go into our front bar rotation which is really just casting brawler anytime that our blast bones isn't up and anytime we can cast blast bones we'll cast it anytime all of our dots are ticking and all of our buffs are up we're going to brawl when one of those falls off we're going to replace one brawler with that buff or that dot that we need to replace you can kind Kind of treat this as a bit of a static rotation where every time you come back to the back bar to replace your archer when it falls off you can throw the arrow barrage down the guardian back on and the beckoning armor and that'll more or less work out you'll cast some things just a hair late and some things just a hair early but it will work out just fine if you want to simplify your rotation that way come back here use all four of these abilities and go back to your front bar and use your blast bones and your brawler and then reapply unnerving boneyard and detonating siphon anytime one of these two drop and then when you see your back Back bar archer dropping go back replace all of these abilities again and then come to the front bar and do your blast bones your brawler and remember that having unnerving boneyard is reducing the enemy's resistances so that your brawler and your blast bones do more damage so try to keep that up when you're on the front bar if you see yourself taking a lot of damage, it's probably because your beckoning armor and your spirit guardian fell off. So that probably means it's time to go to the back bar and replace all four abilities again. As for the blue champion point tree, this is the one where all of our damage is going to come from. We're going to put 40 points into precision, 50 points into fighting finesse, and this is a slottable. So remember, you have to drag it up onto the slottable bar or else it's not doing anything for you. Then we're going to go into the elbow. We're going to put 40 points into piercing. We're going to go back out. We're going to put 50 points into Reaving Blows. This champion node says when you deal direct damage, you heal for 7% of the damage done, which is why we don't have to wear the Ring of the Pell Order with this solo build, and we'll still have a ton of health coming back in while we're fighting. And again, this is a slottable, so don't forget to slot it. Then we're going to go to Thaumaturge and put 50 points into that, and Biting Aura and put 50 points into that as well. Those are also slottables. Then we're going to put 40 points into Tireless Discipline. Then we'll go back into the elbow, and we'll put 20 points into Battle Mastery, and then we'll put 30 points into Mighty, and then we'll top off Battle Mastery. Then we'll go back out and we'll go into the chest this time and we'll put 10 points into Quick Recovery. And this is where we're gonna get our damage mitigation. We'll put 40 points into Preparation, 40 points into Elemental Aegis, and 40 points into Hardy. To find out where to put the rest of your skill points, be sure to visit the written guide in the description. But this is gonna take you up to about CP 1560 or so. All right, as for our red tree, this is where we're gonna get a lot of our life and our sustain. We're going to put 50 points into Boundless Vitality. This is a slottable. We're also gonna put 50 points into Rejuvenation, another slottable. Then we're gonna come down here to Tumbling and put 15 points into that, 10 points into Mystic Tenacity, 40 points into Hero's Vigor, 50 points into Bloody Renewal, which is a slottable. Then 50 points into Ironclad up here, which is another slottable. Then we'll go back down to Tumbling and fill that up. Then we'll fill up Defiance with 40 points. Then we'll go over here and put 8 points into Hasty, 40 points into Tireless Guardian, and 45 points into Fortification. To find out where to put the rest of your champion points, be sure to visit the written guide. As for the green CP, just like I always say in these builds, pick the ones that look most interesting to you. So the ones that are gonna be most useful to whatever activity you're doing at the time. Some of these make the items you find in treasure chests better. Some of these make fishing better. Some of these make sneaking better. Some of them make thieving better. So it kind of depends what you're doing. Are you picking up nodes? Are you opening treasure chests? Are you fishing? And then you're gonna grab the CP nodes that apply. 
there's no wrong or right way to fill this out literally it's totally up to you my favorite ones are definitely break fall which is going to reduce my fall damage by seven percent per stage for a total of 35 percent it's saved my life countless times already i really like steed's blessing this is going to increase our move speed when we're not in combat and also meticulous disassembly which is going to give us better materials every time we deconstruct gear so if you're deconstructing a lot of gear you can't go wrong with this one and don't forget to slot a note if it needs to be slotted all right guys that wraps up the solo stamina necromancer this build is in a fantastic spot this patch we've got some new gear that's really helping to make it shine we've got a new champion point node that gives us life back without having to wear the ring of the pell order so that we can wear a master's weapon on the front bar to really amp up our brawler damage it's just a fun build that's in a great spot right now and i can't wait to spend more time on it this patch i hope you enjoy it if you have any questions about this build or anything else be sure to let me know in the comments below also if you enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe so that you're alerted when i post more build guides or more eso content in general if you ever want to hang out with someone else that loves eso be sure to swing by my twitch stream over at twitch.tv luckyghost and as always the written guide will be linked in the description i'll see you in the next video